Hello everybody, Yabs and Jay Games here, and today is another C++ tutorial, this time how to code on the move. Now, uh, to code, as you probably know, I use uh, uh, Visual C++ 2010 Express, but it's a little bit large to fit on a data pen, and even if you did, it wouldn't work. So, there is another tool, DevCPP. Uh, which you can download for Windows. I would not recommend it though. It's not kept up to date as much as Visual C++. Uh, and it hasn't got as many of the advanced features. But anyway, anyway. Uh, for a portable edition, it's okay. So what you're probably going to want to do is, of course, download it. It will take a little bit of time to download. And I already have it somewhere, but I will replace it. That's not a big download. The next thing you're going to want to do is download a suite called Portable. on PortableApps.com. Now this is not necessary, but it is a lot easier to use. As you can see here, I have various different apps on here. DevCPV Portable, obviously. Uh, Minecraft. 7-Zip, Cam Studio, I don't use Cam Studio to record it, I don't even know where that's on there. Uh, Converter, XM Viewer, which I don't really use that much either. I use it for picture converting sometimes. And uh, Google Chrome Portable, the Dev Edition, because I like the Dev Edition. Uh, I know you can install Google Chrome very easily, but I prefer to use uh, my own edition. So, Next you probably want to do is download that. Uh, you can download it with music. Uh, don't worry, the music is legal, but it's not that good. I haven't even listened to it actually, I don't know. Anyway, so you probably want to download the smaller version. It's only a 6 meg install, so you can really install it on any device. Put you to another SourceForge link. You then download that. Okay, so now you have both pieces of software that you need portable apps and uh, DevCPP portable. Just, I'm now going to install this to my hard disk because it's obviously already installed my USB device. If we wait for this to open, it'll close down some of the downloads. Can you delete them off now? Ah, oh, there we go. Run. So, select your language. Mine's obviously going to be English. Press next. Sign your life away. And it's automatically detected that I have a USB device. Uh, uh, I will install it to my documents. I'll make a new folder and call it uh, test. Press OK. Press the install button. As you can see, it just rattles through all these files. It will take longer to install on your data pen uh, simply because uh, there's it's not the file transfer is not as fast. So if you now launch it, this is obviously my version, it's now free, it says my debt my debt pens 231 gigabytes, which obviously isn't. Okay, so now to install DevCPP, simply go to apps, install a new app, go to the folder where you downloaded it, mine's in downloads, uh, open up the file, it will extract. very slowly very very slowly very very slowly any time today would be nice it's 
Do this many times today would be nice. There we go. And it's installed. So it didn't take that long. There is the app. Uh, it's just going to take the beta version. We can ignore that. You probably want to select your theme. You can select your theme. It's obviously going to give you a preview up there. Imagine you can edit all this. Let's see. So these are all your themes. I'll just go for the new look. This is just how all your menu bars look. I personally prefer the old one. To be honest with you. Uh, just uh, press next there. Uh, create a cache. All this takes place on your data pen on your USB drive, so nothing needs to be installed. I've tried it on school computers and it works. Which is more than we said for Minecraft Portable. It works, but what Minecraft does is every time you destroy a block or place a block or move around, it edits it on the file. So it has to do like lots of tiny edits every single time a new chunk's loaded, which basically means that uh, it's fine on your hard disk, but of course, because this as byte speed is a lot lower than my data pen. You can't see what I'm pointing at, can you now? Uh, the data pen write speed is a lot slower, therefore. Uh, it takes longer to obviously read and write the data. When is this going to be done? So while, while this is doing, I'll show you what you actually want to get. So if you don't know where your project files are stored, it is under C users, your name, your documents, uh, Visual Studio 2010, projects, and then you'll see a list of all your projects down here. So let's do for another project I'm working on at the moment, men. You then want to go into men and then men again or name of your project and then the name of your what you named your source file when you created it in there there will be a file that looks like this it will say it will be a .cpp file that is what you want to copy so I'll copy that over and I'll put it in the oh no what's it going to I'll put it in the folder called test where I saved my uh, thing is. I said my thing hopefully that's finished now. Okay, let's finally start it up. You only you only have to do that once by the way, that loading bit before I link so there you go. So you want to open a project by pressing that button. Go up to where your thing is saved. And you to see uh Users, James, test, should be near the top now, test, click on that there, and lo and behold, there is your code, all of your code, you think you can edit it, the equivalent to the play button is this one here, compile and run, if you press that there, it will then compile your program, and then run it. It's a little bit slow, obviously, because I'm screen recording, and I, and I died. Boo-hoo. Okay, so that's been a quick tutorial about how to code on the move. I've been Yaltimedia Games. Thank you very much for watching.